In this video, we're going to see an example of how exception propagation works in Java. So to start off with, we're going to have a real simple program that starts off with a main, main calls function 1, which calls function 2, which calls function 3, which calls function 4, and then function 4, we declare a variable, we assign the variable, we print it out, and then these functions return. So if we run this program as is, you can see we start with main begin, function 1 starts, then function 2 starts, then function 3 starts, then function 4 starts. We print our value, and then we start unrolling those function calls. Now suppose, here instead of saying val is equal to 10, let's set val equal to 10 divided by 0, which we should expect will create an exception. So if we run this now, you'll see that we get this exception. If you'll notice the call stack trace, the, the exception happens in this line, which we got to that line by calling function 4 in this line, which we got to by calling function 3, and so forth. And you can kind of see this unrolls that call stack. Since the exception happened in function 4, it wasn't handled, and so it throws that exception back up to the caller, which in turn replies back to its caller until eventually we're in the main method. The main method has a unhandled exception. And so you see that the program terminates. So we can catch this exception anywhere we want. And just to demonstrate, I'm going to catch it in function two. So I'm going to put the call to function three in a try block. And again, there's nothing magical about the design where we decided to put the try block here. I'm just doing it to demonstrate that function two is going to can't is going to catch that any exception that occurs in function three. And so eventually this will be where we stop the exception from from continuing back down the call stack. So in your program, this is just a design decision about where you actually want to make sure you're catching the exceptions. So I'm going to catch and it's an arithmetic exception. And as a reminder, when we catch an exception, we get an exception object. So there's a hierarchy here. So the arithmetic exception is the specific type of exception we want to catch here. And there's several others. And then this particular exception object has a lot of different fields and things that we can get. So for example, there's a message that we can get using get message. We can also print the call stack trace. Or actually, let's just do this, where we catch the message, and then we'll, we'll do the rest of that later, so you can kind of see as we build on top of that. So now if I run my program, notice function 1, 2, 3, and 4 all start. We create the exception. Then here, we've handled the exception. We say the exception message is in this case, it's division by zero. And then you'll notice function two ends. So we never actually print function three end or function four end because again, once this line happens, we throw an exception. So it's not handled here, so we go to the caller. It's not handled here, so we go to this that its caller, which function three was called by function two. Here, the exception gets handled. Since it's an arithmetic exception, we go into this exception handler here. Again, it's nice to have some additional information about where the exception happened. So let's print the call stack trace. And I'll put one more blank line there just for clarity's sake. So now if I run this, you can see it actually prints the call stack trace as well. And there's a lot of other information I can get out of there, but I think this is sufficient. And I may want to put something in here like an exception occurred while running function three. And again, this is just something that would help. Hey, there was an exception here. So give some information to the user. In fact, since this is in standard error, maybe I would want to put that in standard out because if for some reason standard out and standard error are going to two different places, this way at least the 
whoever's running this program would see, hey, an exception occurred while running function three. And maybe I'd want to put something like error or something like that. Again, there is a difference between an error and exception in Java. We're not going to get into that in this class, but from the user standpoint, they don't care if it's an error or an exception or whatever. They just know that their program crashed. And so uh, using the word error here is sufficient. So here you can see an exception occurred while running function three. Okay, so that's a quick example of exception propagation. Again, this propagation will go back through the call stack trace until that actual exception gets handled.